Thank you very much for spending a, a Saturday morning with, uh, with us at, at the meeting today. And I want to talk about some of the collaboration opportunities that there may be between businesses and the University of East Anglia. How do I follow the last talk? That's a remarkably difficult talk to follow. Um, a bit about myself. Uh, I have the grand title of Head of Innovation at the University of East Anglia. I'm part of a service which you will see is there to help you work more closely with the university. Um, and I come from a background of originally being a uh, lab-based scientist and moving through uh, various ways of commercialising technology. And I have a role of Head of Innovation where I look after the university's intellectual uh, property portfolio in terms of its patents, its spin-outs, our, our licensing activity, uh, our managed consultancy team, and also a team of relationship managers who I'll be describing what they do a little bit later in the talk. First, how well do you know UEA? Um, these are some of the statistics that we, we like to use, um, which shows that we're actually a very highly rated university when it comes to uh, our, our teaching and our education. We're also very, very highly rated in terms of our research. And our research genuinely changes the world. I think we gathered that from the last talk that, you, that people sat through, that we do really meaningful research. The other thing you would have picked up from that talk is that our researchers are passionate about their research and they're passionate about their research making a difference. Um, so 82% of our research is classified as world leading and actually in terms of citations of the research we're, top ten, we're in the top 10 in the country for actually being um, we don't stand alone on the western side of Norwich. The university is a very proud member of the Norwich Research Park, um, which uh, includes solutions to the, it aims to deliver solutions to the global challenges that are being faced by the world. So we have, in addition to the university, there's the John Innes Centre, the uh, Sainsbury Laboratory, the Earlham Institute, the New Quadrum Institute that's just opened. That's really exciting collaboration between researchers and clinicians. Um, we have the Norfolk and Norwich University NHS Hospital. That is a tremendous level of uh, intellectual powerhouse that's sitting there just on the western edge of Norwich. So how we work together, what is often not appreciated about UEA is how much work it does outside the academic community. Every year, all of the universities, 160 institutions, uh, complete what is known as the HEBSIS survey, which allows us to have comparative data across all of the universities in, in the UK. UEA is in the top 20, both in terms of income derived and in number of contracts done, for consultancy, and intellectual property and number of licenses, both in terms of generation of income and the number of licenses we sign. We want our research to get out into society and for it to make a difference. So how can we do this? It can be complicated. I'm putting up a lot of different routes here. And I'd say one of the key things is come to t and talk to us about what it is that you want to do. Um, because it can be remarkably hard for an organisation as big as a university to actually identify the key academics that you want to talk to who can help with your problem. Um, a classic example of this is we had someone from the manufacturing sector who wanted to solve a material <coughs> science problem. And we found the right academic to do that for them who happened to be in the School of Pharmacy. Now there is no way that someone looking at, at all the academics at, at UEA without knowing our academics would be able to identify this person had exactly the equipment and the skill set required to answer that problem. So that's where we come in. And there will always be a relationship manager that you can talk to, who can talk through, and their job is to find the right academic or team of academics for you to go and then work with. So this is, I know I want to move on to looking at a number of different schemes, a number of different ways that you can do this. 
a number of opportunities that exist, particularly also looking at the implications this can have for funding the work that needs to be done. Um, one particular scheme that the university is increasingly interested in working with is the Knowledge Transfer Partnership. This sets up a trinity between an organisation, the university, and what is referred to as a KTP associate. This KTP associate, while being an employee of the university, is normally based full-time at the premises of the company who is making that third point of the triangle. This scheme is backed by Innovate UK, and for an SME there's a 67% subsidy to an SME for actually participating in the scheme. So typically what, you, what a company would be getting would be the benefit of about um, one day a week of an academic's time to help support the project. They will be getting a full-time person who will be working on that project within the company and they will get the benefit of being able to look into what the university had done in, in background research. It has to be a project that will be of strategic importance to the company. It's um, something that the company wants to change. It needs to know how it will embed this change into the company. Um, and that's why you also have a very uh, generous Innovate UK subsidy on this program. So if anyone thinks that KTP or they want more information about KTP, come and contact us, the contact details at the end, and we'll be able to take you through the process where it has to be applied for, um, and but we have very good contacts with our local uh, KTP team who can very quickly tell us if they think a project is going to be a go or, or not and whether to, to look elsewhere. We heard from the last talk, our academics do an awful lot of consultancy we have a managed consultancy service. Now it may be that you know the academic you want to act as a consultant to you, but if you have a project that you think, I just like, I don't know who I ought to be talking to who might be able to do this, you can uh, contact our managed consultancy service who will look at your query and try and match it to an academic who will be able to uh, undertake the work that is required. Um, for companies who we've never worked with before or uh, where that consultancy is planned to leading on to something that might be a much bigger project, there may be innovation vouchers available that could cover potentially half the cost of a consultancy project up to about a value of 5k. So that is an award on a case-by-case -case basis, but do come and talk to us about it and then we can work out um, whether there is something we can do. Who here is on the MBA course or is an MBA alumnus? I was a bit horrified talking to someone. I was trying to work out whether I actually graduated from the programme this century or last century, and it's right on the cusp. I was trying to work it out. Um, so you are familiar that UEA does CPD, but we do more than sort of like the executive MBA programme. And again, we can talk about putting courses on when there is a need for them. Um, and one of the things that we have at the moment is we have a bid into the Local Enterprise Partnership which will <coughs> enable us to establish an Institute of Productivity and one of the streams of activity associated with that is um, a much more comprehensive CPD programme that we'll be able to launch if we get the funding for that. So if anyone knows anybody in the LEP, the Institute of Productivity is designed to really help promote getting knowledge out and between the companies who are present in Norfolk and Suffolk. Studentships. Um, there are a number of, of programmes where companies can co-fund a studentship and a PhD studentship. I suspect for a lot of SMEs in the Norfolk and Suffolk area this is not probably the most useful way of going to funding a PhD studentship. There are other programs, but what you'll do, it's a hard entry point is what I'm saying, but it is there and it could be something that will move on after you'd entered to one of the other, other points. Internships is something that is of increasing interest and importance um, to the university. It can, 
our internship scheme is actually open not only to our um, students but to our recent graduates um, and the length of time for, for an internship is highly variable. It can't be more than a year, but it could be uh, anything up to a year. And again, what we're looking for for an internship program is to add benefit to both parties. So if you have a project that an intern would be able to make a real difference to, that sounds like a great opportunity um, that we, we can then look to find if we compare that with, with one of our students. Um, Student projects. Now, there are a large number of students that require are required to do projects as part of their degree program. So, if the internships, if you like, sit outside their formal degree program, normally that is something that they would do um, either during their vacations after they've graduated, or if their timetable allows, they might be able to get sort of like one day a week to. The the student projects are much more deeply embedded within the student learning experience. Um, and for example, MBA students are had to undertake a number of projects during the. Term. So, were people in the executive MBA? So, you, you did you get to go to Prague? No, I didn't. Ah, uh, that that was a, that was. I, I have very fond memories of a week spent in Prague work, working on a project there with a, with a company in Prague. Um, so. Um, one thing to note here is the timescales involved. Because these integrate into taught programs, they do come up at certain points during the year, and, and you, you have to think a bit ahead. And a key element at the bottom here is we are increasingly wanting to offer our undergraduate students the potential to take a year in industry. And that means we will be looking for, um, well, we are looking for companies who can interact with us who might be willing to take one of our undergraduate students on a year in industry program. Um, that's probably most advanced at the moment within some of the elements like the School of Engineering, but we want to roll it out across the board, including to subjects like the humanities, where people might be saying, well, what do I want a humanities student for? And my answer to that is, so would you like someone who you can put an awful lot of written information in front of, who can produce a very accurate and well-written synopsis of that that you can read on the train to the meeting rather than giving up your whole weekend to plough through 200 pages? Most people say, oh, I'd like some of that. Well, get a history graduate. It's what they're trained to do. You know, so it's very interesting how the transferable skills that the different disciplines teach students actually have benefit to the different companies. This is a great one for companies and it's amazing how many companies don't know we do this. You can advertise job vacancies through the university's career service for free. You know, there is no charge. They'll help you even uh, work out what the advert ought to say to get a great response and that is a great way of tapping into young talent coming out of the university um, But there is one slide that's gone missing there. Contract research and collaborative research. Now this is a really, really interesting area. There are very formal definitions as to which one, whether any project falls into which category. I don't want to bore you with that. I think the key one would be is that contract research is likely to be much more generating a commercial advantage to the company where collaborative research is likely to be at the pre-competitive stage of a, of a topic and might be of general interest to the whole industry but may not offer a competitive advantage to an individual company. I had to do a piece of work over the summer that was looking at the economy of Norfolk and Suffolk. There are, I think from memory, 38 LEP areas in the UK, so that's local economic partnership areas in the UK. I can't remember the exact placing for how much Innovate UK funding is coming into the Norfolk and Suffolk LEP area, but I do remember it had a three in front of it. We are not getting the Innovate UK funding into Norfolk and Suffolk that it would suggest that we ought to get. One of the reasons that we cannot be complacent about this 
is because with the government industrial strategy and they're looking to drive up R&D expenditure by companies, they're looking to incentivize R&D expenditure within companies, more and more of this is coming through the route of Innovate UK. So if we turn around and say that's just something other areas do, we will lose out massively within Norfolk and Suffolk. Interestingly, we don't get a lot of Innovate UK money into the two counties, but we have an above average success rate for the applications that people do put in. This to me suggests that it's simply an area that people aren't looking at closely enough to see how it could benefit their company and the, uh, and the regional economy. Some of this Innovate UK uh, funding that comes out, in fact quite a lot of it, can only be applied for by commercial industrial partners. As a university, we cannot apply for it. But we are very interested in working with potential people who are putting bids together to see whether we can be partners on that bid to put something into it that the industrial <coughs> partner on their own feels that they can't cover off. If you are doing things like that, please do come and see us at a very, very early stage. We can help see what we can do, and we can also provide realistic costings as to what it may cost to do that part of the project. Because there is nothing worse than finding that something is either over or under costed when you're on a government program. So we, although we can't apply for a lot of Innovate UK funding, we're very interested in companies that do want to and how we can partner with them. On the collaborative front, this is much more likely to be funded by research councils or, I did slightly cringe when I wrote the next bit, the EU. A bit of uncertainty, and it's fair to say, as to what will happen about EU or EU type funding going forward. Um, but again, this is an area where we can work with people if they have questions that aren't necessarily going to directly give a company competitive advantage but are of interest the industry in which they're working or big questions or are willing to participate in studies that can be an area where we can work together on um, on collaborative research so this is a key key two areas here and as I say we're really interested in how can we help companies bring more innovate UK funding into uh, North and Suffolk Oops, I'm not doing really well here. Right. I've spoken about Innovate UK funding. Um, some of the projects. Um, as a university, we also have certain pots of money that we have raised that we are able to use to support this activity. Um, and one of the projects that we're currently partners in is ERA. Um, enabling innovation research to applications. So the main university partners on this were um, University of East Anglia, University of Essex and University of Kent, who are the three universities within a group called the Eastern Arc. But we have also, um, in the partnership, included all of the other relevant universities that, well, so uh, Norwich University of the Arts, for example, is also involved in this program, and uh, the University of, of Suffolk and the Ipswich. Now, what can this help deliver companies? First is innovation vouchers, again, again that 5k limits to help get interactions going, get things started, encourage people to start working together. Um, we have innovation internships, hothouse events, IT members, um, but the key one that is not on this slide that I apologise for. Ah, oh, the R&D grants. Yep, there it is. Um, you can tell it's a Saturday morning. I don't think the brain's fully in engaged. R&D grants. So these are grants that have to be joint between one of the participating universities and a commercial party. You could apply for up to £50,000 as part of one of these grants and the, uh, the commercial party is expected to cover off 25% of that cost. So on a 50K grant, the, um, it'll be 
12 and a half grand would be expected from the industrial partner and the rest would come from the era program so it's for a collaborative project between the industrial partner and one of the universities involved within the era program and the three key areas which this grant money can cover off um, artificial intelligence uh, the digital creative sector and bio agri agri tech sort of life science sort of patch so again if that looks attractive do come and talk to us about it we'll be able to give a very early triage as to whether we think a project is useful or not sorry if a project fits within the remit or not and also whether it could be that you already have your collaborating academic which is absolutely fantastic or you could be coming with a project and saying this is what i want to do can you find me an academic who might be able to help uh, collaborate with us? We will do our best to find you a UEA academic who can collaborate with you. We cannot guarantee that. If we can't find a UEA academic, we'll do our best to f find a somewhere where you can get the expertise that you need. We do have, in universities, we have issues around they run to their own timetables and just think about the fact that you're working with the university and where the hot spots of activity are likely to be in the university year-long timetable so if the period say round about finals exams when an awful lot of our academics are on very very short turnover times for marking vast piles of, of undergraduate scripts is not a great time to say can you do a piece of consultancy in the next five days because so much of our capacity is turned up around finals but so if you just think about how university year works the other points of the year where actually there's much more capacity but um, so that's all great massive number of schemes lots of potential opportunities and the thing people always ask is how do I actually find my way into the university if I don't know the academic I want to talk to how do I actually get to the right place for most of the student place facing schemes that I've been talked about which is things like the internships uh, the work placements and areas like that it's the University Career Service drives that and there's a link up there that will take you through to where the University uh, Career Service main page is with all the contact details you'd need to, to find people on that. For the staff facing side of things, uh, it's the innovation team, the team that I supervise and that again is the web link that will take you through um, and for both of those teams, our job is to help you find the person that you need to work with. So you can ask us hard questions. You can come to us and say, look, this is roughly what I want to do. Can we set up a meeting to discuss it? And we will try and find you the person you need to work with. But even after you've looked at all of that and you're not sure, you're still not quite sure who you want to talk to, we have a generic email business at uea.ac.uk that's nice and memorable now if you're not sure who you want to talk to or where your project sits or who it ought to be just send an email to business at uea we will pick it up and we will respond to that email similarly we have a phone line that if you have any query you can ring that number and we will be able to find someone who can call you back who will be able to respond to that query I'd also encourage people to look at our, our LinkedIn profile and, and again Twitter pages for people to find out more what's going on because we hold a lot of events during the year and a lot of them are open to businesses and we'd love to see new businesses there. Um, one of the challenges we have is that we know who we work with and we know we, what we want to reach out to is the other businesses within Norfolk and Suffolk who we're not working with currently to find out what we can do to help them. And they're my contact details. And again, <coughs> please do come and talk to me. It's amazing what a conversation can actually lead on to. I think it was really interesting in the previous talk when uh, they were looking at the discussions with a legal company with, with Volkswagen um, issues. 
it took a couple of conversations to work out that actually they weren't going to take it any further. So don't be afraid of coming for a chat because it may be that circumstances mean that it doesn't go further, but without those conversations, we can't find out what people want to do and how they want to come and work with the university. Thank you. I haven't looked at my watch, I hope I'm out of time. And, and I'm very happy to take any questions. Are there any questions for you? Thank you. Just a uh, lot taken, but I need to, I have some um, some curious, but I believe I need to read more about it. Yeah. You know. You're based in the ent Enterprise Centre. Actually not. Oh. Um, strangely, my current office is in the library, um, but um, the main team is split between uh, an office in the library and an office in the registry. We drive a lot of the student enterprise through the Enterprise Centre, and I could speak for another half hour on the logic <laughs> behind that model, um, but people like the Managed Consultancy Service and the Intellectual Property Management team are actually based within the, within the registry building. Okay, thank you very much for that, John. Thank you. Um, I've actually got an appointment myself to um, have discussions with um, um, someone who works within the uh, UEA um, on taking an idea forward. <laughs>